Today's question is about bringing in negative energies when you do a reading, not necessarily on purpose, but what happens if you do and what do you do about it? If you're new to this channel and you're interested in mediumship, psychic development, or just understanding spirituality on a deep level, make sure to hit subscribe, hit that notification button, and you'll be caught up with all the videos. Today's question comes from username Piper the Wonder Dog. Love that username. <laughs> Animal lover, I see you. So the question is, what are my feelings on bringing in negative energy, not necessarily on purpose, but when doing a reading, bringing in negative energy, and how does that affect our energy centers? So I want to touch base on a couple of things in this arena because it's really helpful, especially if you're out there doing readings uh, for even professionally or non-professionally, maybe doing readings for loved ones or a friend, et cetera, et cetera. It's really important to hold your space. So I want to talk about a couple of things. I want to talk about how to hold your personal energetic space while you do a reading and bring in energy for other people. And I also want to talk about how to identify that negative energy because it could be a couple of different things. And then lastly, what to do when it comes through. Now, I tell people who get readings, you know, if somebody is bringing through a lot of really negative or scary information, you might want to like walk away. You might want to go somewhere else. There are readers out there that will purposely instill fear in you, trying to sell you a three, $400 candle, telling you you're cursed. It can go down a rabbit hole in an ugly way. And to all of those people out there doing that, shame on you. <laughs> For the rest of the readers who are ethical and honest, most of the time, negative information isn't going to come through. It's just not. We have to think of this on a bigger picture. It will come through, and that's what we're going to address today. But we have to think about this on a larger scale. Your guides, their guides, your loved ones, their loved ones, source, universe, your higher self, their higher self, is bringing in intuitive information to help them. If they bring in negative information that causes them fear, that's most likely not going to help them. Now, that's one source of possibly negative information that can come through. Negative information that is, you know, in regards to what's coming up or the direction they should be heading. That's in the information category. When that comes through, just find the most loving way to present that information in a helpful format not in a fearful format. If you need to take an extra moment to sit, reset your energy, check in with your guides again, check in with their loved ones one more time. Did I hear that right? Is that accurate? Do you really want me to relay this? Please take that extra step when you're doing a session for someone. Now, that's the category of uh, fearful or negative information. Now we have also other categories of negative energy and negative spirits as well. Let's talk about negative energy. If negative energy comes in, it's going to be a few different things. It's either going to be a, an external source that's not connected to what you're reading. In that case, let's, let's make this a little silly, but pretty accurate. It could be your neighbor. It could be, you know, someone in the next room. It could be an upcoming a uh, person reading that you're going to read for another individual that's coming later in the day who's just swarming with negativity. All of these things are possible. This is why it's really important to hold your space. There's two different spaces I'm going to talk about when it comes to holding space in this session. The first being the space of the reading. Negative energy that comes in that has nothing to do with the sitter nothing to do with the information that is coming through for the person you're doing the reading for, external negative energies that come in can be reduced and almost practically eliminated by taking an extra step before you do your reading session. And it's interesting, I'm sitting here saying this, and I, I kind of already know that the user that asked this question already does that. So bravo. But if you don't do that yet, if you just dive into a reading without really setting your intent to surround your space 
in a way that negative energies and information and energetics that don't have anything to do with the session you're you're handling in the moment stay outside that's a good thing it can be as easily it's can be easily done as easy as setting up like a grid or a box around you perhaps a bubble if you're in a, a a room by yourself or with the person that you're reading for, kind of imagining a protective shell around that room, keeping out that which is not important for that session. That is a preventative way of keeping negative information from other situations that have nothing to do with the sitter from coming in, keeping negative energy from outside sources, could be as simple as the neighbor, from coming in while you're doing the reading. Now, if negative energy comes in, you've set up your boundaries, you've, um, you know, GCP, I'll put a link in here, Ground Clear Protect, you can use this in an office setting or a professional reading session as well, or even if you're reading for a friend, please do this. But you can do GCP for the room, for the area they're here and before you do the session, even if you do that, even if you do that, and then negative energy comes in and you can feel it, it might be from the individual that you're doing the reading for, or it could also be the energy of the other living individuals in the person's life and their information is coming through. For example, if you're reading for someone and you know information comes through about their adult sister, right? They're an adult, they have an adult sister, let's say they're close in age, who knows, but let's say uh, psychic or mediumship information comes in about another living person that's not present in the session. If that living person carries a lot of heavy negative energy, that energy can come into the session. It can. And this is where we come into the, the key to protecting your own energetic space, which is in your own energy centers, which is, I think, what really drew me to answer this one particular question from from Piper, the, the wonder dog. When your own centers are open and vulnerable and that type of information comes in, you can leave a session feeling heavy, carrying it, feeling like, you know, you, you swam in the pool with it. And in essence, what you want to do is you want to jump into this, you know, symbolic swimming pool of intuitive information, but you don't want to get out soaking wet with everyone else's energy on you. So doing a practice such as GCP, ground clear protect before doing these sessions for your own energetic space and centers and body is so important. It's so important. When you do GCP, ground clear protect, for your own energetic centers, your own energy body, before doing a reading, what your intent is, is you're saying that you're not bringing yourself into this situation wide open to collect and carry what happens in this session, but you're also going to be able to very clearly use your intuitive channel to pick up information for other people. This is saying you can't come in here, right? You can't come into this core area of mine, my energetic center, but you can, I'm addressing energies and information, energies and information can come into this room, this area, and I can see, feel, and hear them clearly. This is just an extra step of putting on your own sort of protective spacesuit to say, yeah, I'm going to go in there. And I'm going to, I'm going to go into this intuitive experience and I'm going to explore and I'm going to see, feel, and hear things. And then I'm going to share them with the person that I'm, you know, working at helping. But this energetic space suit that I'm doing of GCP is going to make sure that I don't leave the situation coded in other energetic energies that are not mine and that I don't want to carry. Is this a perfect, you know, technique? 98% of the time. You still, you could be doing readings for people professionally or non-professionally for 10 years, and you're still going to run into a situation every now and then where you've gone into the session, you've done GCP for your personal energetic space. You've done GCP for the room that you're sitting in to say whatever's not, you know, included in this session, please don't come in here, <laughs> you know, kind of do not disturb. And still at the end of it, you still might walk away feeling like you, not even feeling like it, carrying the energy of the experience that you had during the session. 
Now, it's not perfect, but this extra step is very valuable. It's an extra step of intent. It says that you don't, and, and kind of stick with me on this one, your own energy doesn't need to be vulnerable in order to access all the intuitive information. I know that there are very popular terms and phrases out there that can lead us to think this. We hear people say you have to be open. You have to be vulnerable. You have to open up your energetic space in order to you know, get intuitive information. And I am here to tell you, you can make a change with that. You can shift that. Your energetic space does not have to be vulnerable in order to get intuitive information. It just doesn't. The person in the space suit doesn't have to go in naked. You know what I mean? You just, it's not. And, and here's my most loving, um, the, I'll say this in the most loving way I can. It's not about you. And, and I don't mean that in a negative way in any way, shape or form. I mean, yay, it's not about you. So you have the ability and it will actually improve your intuitive technique if you separate your own personal energy from what you're reading. If you're not reading for yourself, if you are not connected and it's not purposely trying to find out information for yourself, separate your own energetic system from the reading. Pull yourself out of it. The best intuitive information that ever comes through has nothing to do with you. It is something that you see, you feel, you hear, and you deliver that. And it doesn't have to go all the way in and translate and then come back out. That is an invitation for that left brain of yours to go haywire, to analyze, to think, to assume, to try to make, you know, things clearer, understand. If you're here with me in this session and you do readings, I want you to just try this. I want you to just try doing GCP on yourself, just your energetic space saying, okay, I'm going to, you know, protect my energetic space so that it's not affected by the reading. And then I want you to do GCP on the room that you're in to say, you know, outside information and sources that don't have anything to do with what I'm focused on, this individual or this situation that I'm focused on can stay outside. Two steps, right? GCP for yourself, GCP for the room. Let's throw in the third step. I want you to then practice this reading just saying what you see, feel, and hear intuitively, not what you're translating, not what you are relating to, not what you're trying to figure out, not what you not what you think, because that's not your intuitive channel. So if you're doing readings, do GCP on yourself, isolate your energetic body from this situation because the situation that you're reading doesn't have anything to do with you, so you can protect your, your space. Do GCP on the area around you to keep out all other information. This is going to help you really focus in on what you're, what you're really trying to hone in on. And then let your intuitive channel flow. You don't have to understand it. It doesn't have to make sense. You just have to allow yourself to express to the sitter what you see, feel, and hear. Now, let's get back to the, the negative. I got a little sidetracked there, but as you can tell, I'm very passionate about helping people use their intuition. When it comes to the third source, so now we have negative information. It comes through on a rare situation. When it does, you can always double check and then deliver it with kindness and love and uh, av avoiding fear. When it comes to negative energies, if that does come through, it can be because, you know, the person is, is connected or in a relationship with a negative person or a situation that might come into the reading as well. But you've done GCP. It's going to help help take care of that. If a negative spirit comes into the room, your first step is to sit with the energy of that negative spirit to determine, are you stuck? Because we have, and I, and I go into this in quite, quite a lot of depth, actually, on the Other Side Chats channel, because there are a lot of people in this world that are doing crossing over work. Occasionally, a spirit will get stuck in their transition to crossing over to the other side. One of the biggest tells when a spirit gets stuck is that they have fear-based thinking. And 
I, I mean, th that is just screams someone who is stuck. If someone comes through and they're over anxious, over nervous, if a spirit comes through and they are fearful, over nervous, kind of irrational, not thinking things through, um, scared, that kind of a thing, and it's intense, you may have a situation where a spirit has not crossed over and you might have to take a little bit of a break and help that spirit to cross over before getting back into the session. Now, spirits who have crossed over and come into a reading session expressing something that does have an edge of worry or concern doesn't necessarily mean that they've crossed that they haven't crossed over and that they're stuck. This could be the personality type of the sitter that you're reading for, like their grandmother might have been a nervous type of a person. This is going to be part of uh, translating and giving you information so that the sitter knows this is their relative. That is, it, it's a bit of a fine line. So you're going to need to sit with it. Honestly, if you're already tapped in, you'll know, you'll know. So if a spirit comes through and expresses any sort of fear, concern, or worry, just take a minute and even say that to the person you're reading for. Hold on. I just need a minute to kind of collect some information. Don't say, hold on. A loved one came through and they're terrified. That'll scare the sitter. That's And there's no point in that. Just ask for a minute to be able to energetically just sit quiet and connect with that spirit in such a way that you can ask them, are you stuck? Are you crossed over? Are you okay? And if they are stuck, if they haven't crossed over, that's why they're expressing significant fear-based thinking, dread, doom, et cetera, et cetera. They're still stuck on linear time and they haven't crossed over to be able to see everything that's happened and everything that will happen. As a result of this, it would be very helpful for you to lift them up in light, uh, surround them and just douse them in an uncondi unconditional energetic love and help them to finish their transition and cross over. Ask for their guides for help. Ask for their, the Stuck Spirits guides for help, the Stuck Spirits loved ones for assistance, and shift the focus of that spirit to back into the transition of crossing over. Chances are good they'll leave. They most likely won't come back. Now, if the spirit comes through and it's a negative feel, and you sit with them and you say, you know, energetically with that spirit, are you stuck? Are you okay? They will make it very clear to you, I am okay, but this is a scary situation or this is a situation that is causing anger and fear or this was who I was. They will help you as the reader to understand, yes, I am crossover. I am okay. And I'm just trying to relay this in the fashion that I would relay it to the sitter. This is a wonderful thing to do to do a, a quick double check. And yes, there's always going to be small, situa rare situations where something looks the way it is, but it might not be. There's no perfection to this, this, like every single time it's this, this, and this. So know that most often if a spirit comes through and it's negative, they're most likely stuck. Check in with them if they're not, if they're just delivering information that way because the sitter is going to understand it and translate it from them that way. Then continue to deliver the information. If you told the sitter that Aunt Marge was coming through and that she was super calm and the sitter remembered her aunt being a nervous wreck her entire life, that's not going to line up for the sitter and it's not going to be helpful. So in summary, when you do a reading for someone, Professionally or non-professionally, please GCP yourself. Allow yourself the permission to not have to include your personal energetic space and energy body into this session in order to have clear and concise intuitive messages come through. Actually, if you try this and you test this out for yourself, you're going to see that more intuition comes through because it's not muddied with your own personal energy. It's just a clear channel. GCP yourself, GCP the room that you're in, you know, keep out information that has nothing to do with what you're focused on. That's also a huge leg up when you're doing readings. And then lastly, know that negative energy can be double checked. You can just double check it and then deliver it with uh, love and compassion and uh, a safe space. Negative energy might come through, but your GCP 
you're covered, you know, you can express that negative energy and then you can clear it out of the room once it's done. Lastly, if a negative spirit comes through, take a minute to check in. Why are they expressing themselves in a negative way? Anything beyond that most likely isn't going to come through. There are larger layers of, um, you know, forces out there and energies out there and beings and such that we would classify as, um, you know, not positive and, and such. But those aren't going to come through typically when you do one-on-one -on -one reading. So there's your groundwork. I'm so grateful for the question. It's a great question. GCP for yourself. GCP the room. And know that that will take care of the majority of the negative energy affecting you. And then you can, you know, with patience and love, negotiate anything negative that does come through. Figure out what the message is. Figure out if it should be here. Help it cross, help them cross over or that it cross over, the negative energy cross over. Help all of that through your process. And it's going to enhance your readings big time. Thank you so much for the question. It was an awesome one. In this session, we talked about doing readings for other people, but how do you get information for yourself? Click this video. You're going to love to watch this one. It's going to help you with that exact task.